Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So today we are gonna be doing the Q&A on breastfeeding and pumping. I have a video already on my channel talking about how to start a schedule um, and tips and tricks on how to increase your milk supply, but I have had tons of comments asking more questions about what I talked about in the video, a little bit more in depth. So I figured we would do another video and kind of add on to that. All the questions that you guys have been asking me instead of having to answer each one um, separately. I can do them all here. So this video is kind of like breastfeeding, pumping 101. We'll get into a ton of things and hopefully I'm able to answer all of y'all's questions. Obviously at the end of this video, if you still have questions, I'm always here. You can leave them down in the comment section. But before we get started, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure you subscribe if you're new because I would love to have you in our Soul Tribe Mama family. And yes, I am in my car. I actually drove around so that my babies could take a nap because they have been really cranky and lately getting in the car and driving around has been doing the trick so they are asleep I am now parked at a Walmart <laughs> a Walmart parking lot and letting them take a little nap while I film because I cannot find time to do it at the house especially not without a bunch of noise and kids running around so the background is going to be the car <laughs> I do have a sponsor for today's video, so I'm gonna start with them. And I wanna say a big thank you to Jax for sponsoring today's video. Now, Jax is a small business that sells pumping or I guess breast milk storage bags, which you can actually also use for bottles for your babies if you're out, if you need to bring yourself a drink. It's kind of like um, a mini lunchbox, but for mamas to carry their stuff. And they have really cute patterns. I'm about to show you guys what it looks like. And not only that, the coolest part about this, which is why I loved getting to partner with this company, I think this is genius. I have never seen anything like this before, and especially if you are a pumping mama and you're out and about and you're pumping your milk in your car and then you're going, now where am I gonna put this bag in my diaper bag, making sure it doesn't spill anywhere, or is it even gonna stay cold enough if I'm gonna be out for a long time? And if you travel a lot with your kids or if you travel a lot in general and you need to pump on the go all the time, this bag right here is a must. So this one is kind of like their boho one. It's really neutral, which I love. I love these colors. It's got the name on the front and this little leather patch or faux leather patch. It does come with the handle up top, but then it also has a full body um, handle that you actually can clip on and off if you need it or don't need it. And then let me go ahead and open it because I actually have bottles in here right now. <laughs> Okay, first of all, this is what the inside looks like. The whole thing is insulated. It is really thick and padded. And then it also comes with, you can buy this guy as well and see how cool that is. So obviously everybody pretty much knows what these are. You leave them in your freezer, they get super cold. And that way when you put them in your bag, they will keep everything nice and cold and uh, for long periods of time, especially with the insulation in here. But I love the design, how it has these little curves in it so that you can put up to six bottles in here full-size bottles or maybe you're bringing yourself you know a dr pepper a can of dr pepper your own juice or maybe you have multiple children like i do and you need to bring a couple snacks um you know those go-gurts could fit in here their little yogurts or even their own juices as well plus your baby bottles that you've pumped and that you've also need to bring extras for but this part y'all is the best part so you look at this is the the lid and it's got this guy right here it's very stretchy and it actually comes unclipped up here you can unclip it and then if you've ever seen the little hole at the top of the the breast milk storage bags a lot of them have like a little hole at the top especially the Modelo ones but if yours doesn't come with a hole you could always just push a little hole through and it actually slides right into here you unclip it you slide it on there and then when you close it your milk storage bags will hang off of this inside here and then you could also have this guy in there as well and that way it keeps your milk from top it, toppling over spilling by accident getting smushed any of that stuff and it keeps it nice and cold so until you get home and then you can put it in the freezer or the fridge but then again like i said if you even pump a lot of times i would pump and put them in bottles and then just sit them in my diaper bag so i love that this comes with all of that but y'all this thing is genius like i'm not even joking this is like the coolest thing i've ever seen so many things you can do with this bag 
I, I think this is a must. I definitely wish I would have had this when I was full on pumping and breastfeeding like 24 seven. If I would have had this bag with me, it would have been, it really, really would have helped me out. So this one, like I said, is kind of like their boho, real neutral. And then they also have one that is this like navy striped look and it. That's so cute as well. And you see how like they're still compact. They're not huge bags, but they're not teeny tiny either. So they're gonna fit everything you need, but at the same time, they're not taking up a bunch of space. You could leave one in your car. And then if you know you're about to leave, just grab your little ice pack out of your freezer, put it in here, and then you're ready to go and keep all your stuff together. And another tip, if you are breastfeeding while you're out, you could actually leave your little breast pump like if you use the LV for example the uh, cordless wireless hands-free if there's milk in it but it's not full enough yet you could actually put that in here with your little ice pack close it and it'll keep the milk good in there it actually keeps like the bacteria and stuff away if you haven't if you're not able to clean your breast pump while you're out after pumping and keeping it in somewhere cool like this will help that and then that way when you get back in the car and you need to pump more you could always put it back on and then you know it's not going to be all gross or anything like that so another little tip there thank you again Jax, for sponsoring today's video if you guys are interested in one of these bags i will have the links down below for you guys so check that out make sure you go follow them on instagram as well and let's go ahead and get into the q a 101 on breastfeeding and pumping okay y'all let's go ahead and start with the first question i am outside i'm trying to as many times as i can pull my camera out to do this q a so it's going to be all over the place you'll see me in probably different outfits different places <laughs> but with my kids right now that's just how I gotta do it. So the first question says, any tips on balancing between feeding on the breast and pumping? I'm going back and forth and haven't quite found a good rhythm yet, especially because I'd like to up my supply. I would say if you're starting out from newborn, like just had your baby up until three months, what I tried to do was every time after baby fed on me, completely done both sides, um, maybe they only fed on one, whichever it was, but after baby was done eating, I would put my pumps on me both on at the same time and I would pump for about 10 minutes and then see if if my breast was empty if it just seemed like I was pumping literally air out there was nothing else coming out then I would stop put them away put the milk away even if it was just like half an ounce sometimes I would have more than that because baby just didn't eat all of it and then that's what I would put in a baggie or in a bottle and I would put it in the fridge and then the next time baby would eat, I would do the same thing. He would eat, and then after he was done eating, I would put my pumps on. And again, y'all, this is where those portable, cordless, really easy to use um, breast pumps come into play. Because this way, you're not tied down to a pump. You can just put them in your bra, walk around the house. You gotta do laundry, you gotta do dishes, whatever it is that you have to do, and pump for 10 minutes, even up to 30 minutes if you have to. And that way you're not like wasting your time just sitting there and it makes it more convenient and then that way you can pump more times during the day because i know especially in the newborn stage they're eating like two hours every two hours sometimes three but most of the time it's every two hours so you feel like all you're doing is feeding baby and then pumping and feeding baby and then pumping and doing absolutely nothing else which it's still going to feel that way but at least if you're using the portable ones the cordless ones you're not having to sit in one spot scrolling through your phone <laughs> for you to be done now if you miss some like if you're busy and you just don't have time or let's say you just don't want to <laughs> you're just at the point where you're like okay I've done it too many times I'm just over this today and you just don't want to put the pumps on that's totally fine if you miss a few here and there I totally get it and I would try to keep that up as much as you can from newborn to three months now when you hit three months old your body's pretty much gonna get used to how much your baby is eating you may see a dip in your milk supply but that's when I would really start using like the um, power hour or the golden hour pumping trick. At that time, I would probably only be pumping like a couple times a day, um, just depending. Now this is really hard to give y'all like a specific answer because every single body is different. There's so many different variations, so it's really hard. It's not like, okay, you're only gonna pump this many times a day. I'm just giving you guys what I have done and what has worked for me. So all of these things that I'm telling y'all today may not work for you. So don't take what I say as like, this is how it is and nothing else is gonna work. That's not the case. So again, y'all, I guess I should have like started this video out with a disclaimer. Obviously, I'm not a lactation consultant. I am not a doctor. I'm 
only giving you guys experience from myself having four four kids and doing the breastfeeding thing um, and pumping and trying to make a milk stash so hopefully these tips are gonna help you guys and these answers are gonna help you all but at the same time this is when you're really gonna start figuring out what your body needs what your baby needs specifically to you and your body and your baby you may start out with what i'm saying in the newborn phase and then as they get a little bit older you'll figure out your own rhythm and like what how many times you need to pump if you don't need to pump at all if you only need to pump one time i just want to let y'all know that the newborn to three month phase is like the most crucial when it comes to really wanting to breastfeed like if you know you want to breastfeed for longer than three months that's when i would just try your hardest and again you may feel like all you're doing is feeding a baby 24 7 like you have no time at all and it probably is gonna be true but if you can keep that up and stick with it not only will you help your milk supply you'll be feeding your baby you'll be starting a milk stash but then after three months you're actually gonna it's gonna be so much easier for you it's gonna be like second nature the biggest thing that you want to know with breastfeeding is that as long as your breasts are being emptied completely your body's gonna be triggered to make more milk so if there's any milk left over which is why I like to pump after baby eats to make sure that whatever baby didn't eat gets out so that my body produces more now on those times that like I said you fall asleep you forget to pump the rest out um, maybe your baby did eat all of it and you don't really need to pump you can tell that they ate everything there's nothing left in there that's totally fine it's not gonna totally mess you up if you do that once or twice now if you're doing it consistently and then you really start to tell that like your baby doesn't seem to um, be full enough they seem hungry all the time after they eat or you can tell that there's a drop in your milk that's probably why it's probably because you've left milk in there and so your body's like oh well there's still milk in here so next time I need to produce milk I don't really need to produce as much as I did the time before so that's just like something to keep in your mind as long as you can tell that your breasts are being emptied you're doing a great job your body's gonna be triggered to make more um, the next time or at least that same amount and if you do feel like it's dropping off that is why I think pumping is such a great thing because you can't really force your baby to like keep feeding on you if they're done they're done if they fall asleep and you can't get them to stay awake you know whatever it may be you can't force your baby to make it to empty your breast out if they haven't done that already so at least if you have the pumps then you can put them on and make sure that the milk is completely out and then whatever is in the pump then that's a way to start your freezer stash or even just a fridge stash if you need an extra bottle for a day um, by the end of the day you have a full bottle and then daddy can feed baby with that at the end of the night or something like that okay so the next one says my son's eight weeks and i'm struggling to up my supply i'll definitely be watching to learn any tips great thank you um we breastfeed and pump and supplement when absolutely needed okay so i'm guessing by the way that she wrote this question that you're able to feed your baby completely fine but all you really want to do is to up your supply so that maybe you could have a freezer stash that's what i'm going to guess because it says that you're breastfeeding and you're pumping and you're supplementing so i think that's great all those things are great so if you do want to up your supply the best thing to do is number one try out the power pump or the golden hour pumping session which is going to be after baby eats or really you could do this any single time you don't even have to wait till baby eats it could be any time of the day it does not matter maybe at night time you want to do it because baby's sleeping then whatever you want to do whenever you have time to do it is when you should do it so you're going to put your pumps on you're going to pump for 20 minutes you'll turn them off for 10 minutes you'll turn them back on for 10 minutes turn off for 10 minutes and back on for 10 minutes so you're pretty much like it's considered pumping for an hour with a couple spaces in between where you're pausing and mainly all you're doing is trying to mimic what your baby would do if they were cluster feeding because they're going through a growth spurt or whatever it is and that again tells your body that you need to produce more milk for your baby now you can do this once a day for a couple days and see if it does any effect at all if it if you can tell that there's an increase in your milk supply you could do it two times a day you could do it three times a day it really just depends on how much time do you have to do it because I know that it can be time consuming especially when you're already feeding your baby and trying to do all these other things so if you can do it once a day great and there's really no set time like you could do it every single day for a week you could do it every day for three days it all depends on you and your body so once you could tell that your body 
has um, pr is producing more milk, you can stop doing it. It really just depends on you and you figuring out that rhythm of like what works for your body. Now, I know you said you're supplementing. I don't know if you meant by formula for your baby or if you mean by supplements for you to increase your milk. So number one, Milky Mama is my absolute favorite place to get stuff for me. I would definitely order their emergency brownies. They ha they're very potent. So now again, just because that I say that doesn't mean that every single person that orders them is going to eat them and then all of a sudden they're going to be like engorged with milk. Some of you guys will and some of you won't. You'll see a little bit of a milk increase and some of you may see a lot. So it just depends but I do think that those brownies really really help especially if you're adding that to your pumping routine and the power pump or the golden hour. The next thing they have are the little herbal drops, which those are a daily thing that you would do that you put under your tongue and they have a bunch of different ones to try. They also have cookies, they have drinks, but the two that are my favorite is the emergency brownies and then the herbal drops that are daily. The emergency brownies, you're only gonna eat those like for three or four days um, and then see what happens with everything else that you're doing. It's not something that you would necessarily eat every single day for your whole pumping and breastfeeding journey, it just depends. Okay, so here's another one on increasing her supply. So it says that she's trying to increase her supply. Uh, we're exclusively pumping right now. My son is 14 days old and so far has only had breast milk. We aren't good at nursing, it takes him forever. He's always still hungry and I'm so sore. He had lost more weight at his three day doctor appointment and lost another few ounces a week later. That's when we decided to try pumped milk instead. We don't have another appointment until Wednesday, but we're hopeful he'll be gaining now. First time mom, and let me also just say that your videos are so helpful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate appreciate your advice and what feels kind of like friendship from this side. Oh my gosh, definitely, I love it. Thank you so much. And I think of all of you guys as my friends as well, especially my mama friends, because it can be hard to find some good mama friends, you know? Only breast milk, stopped the breastfeeding, only pumping, which I think that was a great thing to do, especially if your baby is still losing weight, you just don't know, because when they're breastfeeding, you can't count how many ounces they're getting, you don't really know how much they're getting. So pumping the milk instead and seeing it in a bottle and how much that they're eating or how much they need to have is a great reference at least. But again, since you are pumping, I think that you're definitely gonna start seeing more of an increase just off of that alone, especially if you're keeping a pumping schedule. So every single time your baby is getting a bottle, you should be pumping as well. If your baby's about to feed, put your pumps on, start pumping, and I would even pump as long as baby's eating and finishes the bottle and then maybe like five to 10 minutes longer than that because that's gonna tell your body to make more milk, especially if it's pumping nothing, like if you have nothing else coming out and you keep your pumps on for an extra five minutes, that will tell your body, hey, we need more, we need more. There's nothing coming out, we need more. But I definitely think, I know that <laughs> this video is coming out a little bit later, so keep me updated. I would love to know how your baby is doing, if he has gained any weight, if you've seen any increase in your milk just from pumping alone. And also, don't forget to try out any, any kind of supplements. I will link the supplements from Milky Mama and the brownies down below. I'll also link a few other items that I think have helped me and through my breastfeeding and pumping journey if you guys want to check them out um, and maybe even a few other references as well that you guys can watch youtube videos that y'all can watch and obviously don't forget to try out the power hour pumping session all right y'all i am now at my mom's house <laughs> i know i look totally different and in a different place but i actually got a shower so i feel really good so the next question says a daily routine or schedule i know it's not going to be rigid at first but I'm 32 weeks and trying to wrap my brain around the day to day. Also, how does this transition when they are one month, two months, etc.? Thank you. I believe that a routine or a schedule is crucial, especially from newborn to three months old, because after three months it becomes second nature and then you just kind of go with the flow and it's not going to be as hard. But in those first three months, it's going to be kind of like a job. You're going to be feeling like that's all you do. And if you want to keep it up, then that is a good thing. You want it to be that way. And if you're feeding on demand, breastfeeding on demand with your baby, then that is a schedule in itself. The baby is going to be eating every three hours, but a lot of times with newborns, it could be every two hours. So every two hours in that newborn stage, you're gonna be feeding your baby. 
And then after you feed your baby, like I've said before in, in this video, is you will put your pump on only if you're wanting to build a stash, make your milk supply increase, any of those things. You do not have to pump after you breastfeed if all you wanna do is breastfeed on demand. That's totally fine. If you don't wanna have a stash and you just wanna breastfeed on demand, that's totally fine. If you don't wanna breastfeed at all and you only wanna pump exclusively, that's totally fine. The only reason I talk about pumping afterwards is because I always had a problem with my milk drying up, even when I was feeding on demand, not getting enough to baby, so I had to supplement all the time, um, and knowing that I wanted to have a milk stash so that when I decided to quit breastfeeding and pumping, that I would have milk left for either daddy to feed the baby, for me to feed the baby, to transition into formula or transition into regular milk, whatever it may be. And then it's always really nice because if you do end up having a lot of milk stored and your baby just doesn't need it, you can actually donate that milk to a hospital, to a NICU, to babies that actually need that milk. So there's a lot of benefits of uh, pumping and doing all of that, but I just wanna say, if you know you wanna breastfeed and you do not wanna pump, that is totally fine. You do not need to do this, but you will still be on a schedule. If you do not keep your baby on a schedule, which really your baby's gonna be keeping you on a schedule on when they're hungry, which is normally every two hours in that newborn stage, but let's say they sleep through the night and then in the morning, that sleeping through the night and then you wake up engorged and you have so much milk and baby goes to eat and they don't get all the milk out of you and you don't pump, then the next time you go to feed your baby, your boobs are not gonna make as much milk as they did before. So that is why I feel like pumping is just a great thing to do. Now, once you hit about two and a half to three months old, they're going to start feeding more on the three hour mark. And then when you hit the four months old range, it'll start being four hours. So every four hours, your baby will need to feed. Now also, in that newborn stage, especially that first month, sometimes even going into the second month, if your baby doesn't wake up in the middle of the night to eat, you might wanna go ahead and pump. I'm a big fan of letting your baby sleep and whenever they're ready to eat, they'll let you know that they're ready to eat. If your newborn is tired and they're just not hungry, they're gonna sleep through the night and then they're gonna wake up and tell you they're hungry. But if your baby is sleeping through the night, I would still wake yourself up to pump that milk out. Now, if that's not the case, your baby is probably waking you up every two hours at night <laughs> to feed and that's totally fine and that's totally normal and it's actually going to help your body to keep producing that milk and to stay on that schedule so that you make plenty of milk for your baby to eat. Now, once you hit four months, it kind of goes up from there. Every baby is different. I feel like after the four month range, some babies will be like all over the place. They'll be like, you know, eat at seven, then eat at nine, and then all of a sudden they don't eat for like five hours. <laughs> and then they eat again every like two hours and then it's just, it could be everywhere. So it just depends on your baby, on your schedule, if you're going back to work, how all of that is gonna happen. Okay, the next question says, first time mom due in January, congratulations. Should I pump after each time I do a feeding when I come home from delivery? I've seen things where it says you should only pump once a day. Again, this is your preference. I came home, so let's say you come home on the third day um, after delivery, and I went ahead and started pumping. I waited until my milk came in, like it wasn't just the colostrum that was coming out, it was actual milk coming out to start pumping. Um, some moms don't, some moms pump right away, and that's totally fine, but I've never done it that way. Um, I waited for my milk, so that was about like day three, going into day four, and I would put my pumps on I would say the first like three days, I didn't do it every single time baby ate just because I was exhausted. But whenever I thought about it and I wasn't ready to go to sleep or something, I would go ahead and put them on for just a few minutes, try to get the rest of that milk out. Now, after the first week, then I really was like on it. Every single time he ate, I put my pumps on for five to 30 minutes, depending on what I needed and get that milk out every single time. Now at nighttime, I did not pump at all. My baby, we co-slept, so it was very easy to breastfeed him at night. When he was hungry, he would just eat and then he would go to sleep and then I would go to sleep. So 
it was easier for me to keep my milk supply up, especially through the night if he was hungry and he was right next to me, rather than having to wake up, feed him, pump, or maybe he slept all the way through the night and then I was pumping at night. I He actually never slept through the night, so he was always eating. So that never was my issue. But you don't have to pump at night. You don't have to wake yourself up to pump unless your baby has literally slept all night then I would try to get up at least one time to pump that milk out so that your body is triggered to make more. Oh, so this was part two of somebody's question. It says also, should I try and start a stash even if I think I might exclusively breastfeed? Which I think I kind of answered that <laughs> after I answered the other question, but you don't have to at all. If you don't want to, that's totally fine. I just think there's so many benefits to having that breast milk on hand. So if you are, exclusively breastfeeding and then at nighttime you want to take a bath or you need to take a nap and your baby is hungry who's going to feed the baby you but if you have milk then you can give your baby a bottle and another thing that's good about that is that then you get your baby used to the nipple and the bottle that way when it comes time to transition them to the bottle exclusively they don't have an issue with it because they've already had it before um, and then number two, there's so many benefits to breast milk, to putting it on rashes on your baby's bum, on their body anywhere. You could put it, I've put it on uh, my baby's like little uh, baby acne on their face and their dry skin and it helps immediately. I put it on my own skin, on my nipples when they hurt. There's so many benefits y'all. And of course it's always good to have so that when you are transitioning from exclusively breastfeeding to giving them formula or maybe they're at the point where they're gonna have regular milk you can't just go from breast milk and then one day you're just like okay all formula for one they're not gonna like it number two it may make their tummy upset so you want to do like half and half and give them bottles of that and then slowly get rid of the breast milk and only do whatever it is that you're trying to do with them so another good reason to have it but it just depends y'all i mean you don't have to at all i wanted to because of those reasons and that is why i strived so hard to make sure that i had some kind of stash which after having mastitis twice that really ended up dwindling to nothing but i'm grateful for this time that i did have because when i did get mastitis i had milk in the freezer so my husband could feed the baby or i could feed him a bottle if i was just in so much pain and all i was trying to do was pump on that side because it hurt so bad. I didn't want baby on there. But I do wanna point out one thing. If you, the first week of breastfeeding, you realize that you get engorged a lot, like you are just making so much milk, it's just spilling out everywhere, it's choking your baby, do not pump. Because if you do that, again, it's gonna trigger body to make more milk and you're already making a ton of milk. I have not had that problem, so I can't you know, tell you how to quit that or how to help your body get rid of some of that but if you try to pump then it's just gonna make it worse so I would definitely I mean you could pump that first week and then see how it goes if you can tell that your body's just making way too much milk and it's hurting you and it's just not good for baby then just completely stop pumping all right so this next question says I'm curious to know when do you use your freezer milk stash if I'm planning to stay home for the first year would I need a big freezer stash again I've kind of already answered this question um, a couple different times but no you do not need a freezer stash if you're staying home and that's all you're gonna do but again I think there's some great benefits to the to having the freezer stash it's just up to you okay this one says any tips for clogged ducts I have a deep stubborn one that is sticking around despite massaging feeding, pumping, and using heat, etc. Number one, I think one of the best things that helped me the second time around with my mastitis and my clogged duct was sunflower lecithin. I was taking that and that definitely helps. But I feel like if you have done everything, if you have put the haka on, which I don't know if that's a, she didn't really say that specifically, but another thing that you can do is put really warm water in the haka with salt or epsom salt put that suction that onto your boob to the point where your nipple is immersed in that water that salt water and it's also suctioning at the same time and you'll notice that some milk or even the clog will come out slowly you may have to do that a few times for it to completely come out and in between doing that i would definitely just keep massaging put hot a hot compress not only right here but here or underneath wherever it is that 
you feel it is the hardest. Um, but once you've done all of those things, if you are still having problems and you can't get that clog out, it will turn into mastitis and that is even worse. So I would definitely call your OB. I would call a lactation consultant and see what they can do for you. Because once you hit that point where you're at mastitis, and it gets real bad and you start getting a fever and all those things, then you have to go and get antibiotics. So it's not fun. It is really not fun. It feels like you have the flu and your boob hurts. <laughs> it's just not fun. So if you have tried all of the things and you feel like it's just not coming out and it's not working and it's getting more painful, please call your OB, a doctor, or your um, lactation consultant. My eight month old son has his first tooth coming in. Other mamas have already warned me that I will get bit. <laughs> Any tips to try to avoid this or ways to minimize pain? Okay, I've only been able to go long enough with my last baby to the point where he was growing teeth when I was breastfeeding and I was completely worried about this as well. He has bit me a couple times, but it's usually because he's like playing around. He's not really at that point where he's just so hungry and I can kind of tell when he's about to like chomp down. And what I do is I put my finger right here. You can either stick your pinky inside their mouth and pull and it will make them release um, any kind of pressure that they're putting on it. Or I would take my finger and I would push right here, like almost like you're pushing on their gums from the outside. And again, it makes the suction come off so that their mouth opens. And I would do that and I would go, don't bite me, <laughs> you know, don't do that, stop. And he would look at me and it is painful, but if you can do that quickly, I think over time that you can definitely help train your baby. Like that's not okay, do not do that. If it gets to the point where all they're doing is biting you, then you may need to quit breastfeeding because it, it's just not gonna be fun for you. And there are times when your baby, as they get older, that's what they're gonna do because they're gonna be fidgety. They're gonna be eating on you and like twisting and turning and all of those things. And it can be a little nerve wracking. So other than those tips, I don't really know a whole lot more that you can do. I haven't tried anything else because I haven't had him, you know, constantly every single time he's on me, try to bite me. But I do know that if you can tell that they're like done eating, then just take him off or him or he or she, I don't know if you have a boy or girl, but just take your baby off. That way they don't have a chance to bite you because they're up, they've already eaten and they're kind of just bored, you know, just chill in there. This question says, how much milk do you recommend having in your freezer stash? I want to have one for date night and when she starts eating more, but I also don't want to sacrifice my time with my newborn chained to my pump only to find out I built up way more than I needed. Okay, again, this is gonna be a personal thing because every baby eats differently. Some of them are super, super hungry and they need a lot of milk. Other ones, they eat you know, sporadically here and there and they don't need as much stash away. If you know your baby eats a lot, you could never have enough in your freezer stash to tell you the truth because you'll realize that you get a bag of four or five ounces, maybe even six ounces and you're like, dang, look at me, I got a six ounce bag of milk. This is awesome, it's so much milk and your baby will scarf that down in like five seconds flat. Then you go, okay, I only have four of those bags in there or 10 bags in there. How long is that gonna last me? Maybe a couple days. So if you realize, and now obviously I'm talking about if you end up giving your baby more bottles during the day of that milk. If you're giving them two to three bottles a day, um, even if it's one to two, you're definitely in a week, one to two a day, you would probably need like 20 bags of milk in your freezer or your fridge. So think about that ratio, just depending on your baby, how much they eat, um, and then try to figure out from there because again, it's very, there's no specific number. It just depends on your baby. I would put my milk bags or my bottles of milk that I pumped, I would put about like three to four in the fridge. Once I got to four in the fridge, whatever I pumped after that, I would put in my freezer. So that way, whatever was in the fridge was ready to go. I didn't have to like thaw it out or anything. I could just put it in a bottle, heat it up a little bit and then give it to my baby or my husband could, if that was the case. And then I would just try to replenish that as the days went on. So if I had used one and there was only three in the fridge, then the next time I pumped, I would put that one in the fridge. And then the next time I pumped, I would put that one in the freezer, if that makes sense. And then that way, whatever's left over, you just keep piling it in your freezer. And then one day you, you realize, holy crap, I have, a lot of milk in there and your milk stays good in the freezer 
up to six to nine months, I think. So the milk in the fridge is only good for about a week, but in the freezer, it's six to nine months, y'all. My fourth baby is four months old. I have never pumped more than a few bottles with all of my kids, but I have noticed my supply is not that great. Am I still able to increase it? Yes, you can. It may take more work for you to do that. I would definitely, if you haven't tried already, try the emergency brownies and some herbal supplements from Milky Mama. Try to do the power hour or the um, the golden hour pumping session. I would do that like at least once a day for like four days and see if you see a difference. We do on-demand feedings, but after about 10 minutes in each breast, she gets fussy and will still be hungry, but not want the breast. So we have started to do formula supplementing. And that is great. Don't ever feel bad for having to give your baby formula to supplement your breastfeeding. It is totally fine. As long as they're getting full, happy bellies, that's all that matters. I know it can suck for us as moms because we are have our hearts set on exclusively breastfeeding or pumping or whatever it is. And sometimes it's just not enough and that's okay. It's okay. It doesn't mean that you lack in any area of being a mom. You're still a great mom and you're doing the best for your baby. And the best thing is to supplement with formula and that's that's totally fine. I have I have done that with Knox because of after going through mastitis twice, my supply just dwindled not only in my freezer stash but also myself and you know things happen. So I was able to supplement with formula but we still breastfeed. Um, here and there. Now I'm to the point where he drinks regular milk, but I only breastfeed him at nighttime and sometimes during the day to get him down for a nap. I would definitely keep up the formula feeding, you know, keep your baby on you on demand. And then if they need more, give your baby formula. But when they're eating that formula, go ahead and pump and try those other things that I said earlier and see if you see any difference. Because if anything, you could just pump the milk and have it ready to put in a bottle with the formula so they could get both. It really doesn't matter where you're at in your breastfeeding journey just because your baby is four months old doesn't mean that your milk's just gonna like be gone and you could never increase it. If you are trying to increase it and you're trying to do all those things, you probably will see an increase. And another thing y'all, your breast milk is going to increase and decrease many times throughout let's say a whole year of breastfeeding. There's gonna be months where you're just overflowing with milk and then things are gonna happen. It, and there's so many reasons for this. It could be you have your period, you are going through stress, you're overwhelmed, or maybe even that you're stressing about not having milk. That can actually cause your body to not produce as much. So try not to stress about making enough milk. Just let it go, let it flow. Whatever you get is what you get and be okay with that. But like I said, it's just gonna go up and down and sometimes you're gonna have to do things to help increase it and then sometimes you're gonna be totally fine and not need to do anything. So don't let that discourage you when you see it drop. Just try to do some things using supplements, food, like cookies, you know, fiber in your diet. Make sure that what you're eating, you know, you're getting enough liquids, water, even Gatorade. Um, liquid IV is a great one too to help multiply the, your water intake and the hydration that you're getting and that will actually help your milk supply as well and then on top of that what you're eating make sure you're eating really good foods and fiber and proteins um, all of that stuff but obviously supplements and brownies and lactation brownies and cookies can help as well okay this question says do you pump in between feedings yes i do and i did up until we were about I would say four months, four to five months along. And about at that time, I stopped pumping in between every feeding. I would only pump once or twice, or maybe if I knew I was gonna be running errands and I was out more and out and about more with my baby, then I would have my LV pumps on while I was driving so I could pump while I was driving everywhere I would go. I would drive to Target and pump, go to Target. When I got back in the car, I would put the pumps back on and pump again back home or maybe to another store. And that way I could keep my milk increasing, but also have a stash for my baby. Or maybe I would feed him that bottle of breast milk that I pumped once we got to Target, whatever it was. I definitely didn't do it as a rigid schedule after about four months. I kind of just went with the flow for the pumping. Some days it was many times, some days it was only one time and then the rest of the time I would feed on demand. To answer your question, yes I did, but only for a certain amount of time. Okay, this question says, what to do if your baby only eats on one side of the breast? My four month old refuses to eat on my left side. That is totally fine. 
I don't want to say always, but I would say like 98% of moms are going to have a dominant breast, which just means that one breast is going to make more milk than the other. You're going to be struggling sometimes to get that other breast to make enough milk. You'll probably make an ounce and then the other side will make like four or five ounces. I've had that issue with all of my babies and especially with Knox. Now I only feed him on one side. My right side was always the, the one that just didn't make enough. So after a while, I just quit feeding him on that side. And he also seemed to be more frustrated with that one. And I think for that reason, because it was, it took longer for the milk to let down. It seemed like he wasn't getting enough on that side. So my left side actually produces a good amount of milk. I just quit. So the only thing that's not so fun with that is that one breast will look bigger than the other and fuller than the other because that's the only one producing the milk. But if you're okay with that and it's not the summertime, you're not in bikinis or anything, nobody's really gonna be able to tell if you're wearing a t-shirt or even in the wintertime, a jacket. But it definitely will look a little different. Your nipples will also look different as well. It'll look like two different people if you just looked at your chest in the mirror. But I do only feed on one side with baby boy and that is totally fine. And I've seen a ton of other mamas that do the same thing because that's the one that made the most. And now that we, and I think I started doing that once we hit like six or seven months of breastfeeding, I really could tell, especially after going through both of those mastitis issues, that my right one was just like dwindling to nothing. And I thought, I'm not gonna kill myself to try to get this one back up. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with the one that's doing great and is the, the superhero of breastfeeding for now. And it's worked out fine for us, so. If you're okay with just going to the one, just go to the one and it's okay. Baby, if baby loves that one, just let them feed on that one. You could definitely try to pump on your left while baby is eating on your right. So it, it's trying to trick your body into thinking that you have like twins and you need to up the milk on one side. But again, if you're doing that all the time and it's still just not producing that much and your baby just doesn't want it, then just let it be. Let it die off and stick to the one side. How to use Hakka without baby kicking it off. <laughs> I was also very worried about this because I thought if he kicks this or messes with it, or if I touch it by accident and it flips off and all the milk goes, I am going to cry. So I definitely took me a minute to figure out how to put it on correctly and suctioned enough to where it literally was not going anywhere. I finally got it down and I can't really like, show y'all right here but there are tons of videos here on youtube that show you demonstrate how to do it tell you step by step i will link one down below for you guys if you want to watch it if you know how to put it on correctly it will not get kicked off i promise you it is suctioned on so hard like i mean almost half your boob is suctioned into this thing that your baby could accidentally hit it with their foot, their arm, and it's not gonna come off. Definitely make sure you watch one of those like how-to videos and practice a few times without baby on you, maybe even walk around or accidentally rub it with your hand and see, make sure that it doesn't come off and then you'll feel better about it. I have a one month old and at first I would breastfeed and pump all normal. Now when I pump, I only get one ounce in total and he doesn't really like to latch like he used to. I want to up my milk supply even if I'm feeding him with bottle but I'm not sure what would help first time mom here okay so again there's so many factors that go into this I don't know you know since your baby's only one month have you been consistent with you know every two hours feeding him on demand or every two hours pumping feeding and pumping because if you are you probably shouldn't see a, a dip in your milk supply just yet you usually don't see it happen until like closer to three months let's just say that you have done all of those things and you really are you know sticking to this thing and trying your hardest and on top of that you're saying your baby doesn't latch very well or doesn't like to latch number one if you want to try to keep the breastfeeding going and you want him to latch on i would definitely get a hold of the lactation consultant at your local hospital or maybe even the hospital that you gave birth at. Um, if you didn't give birth in a hospital and you have a doula, I would call them or a, um, a birthing uh, center and see if they can help you with that. Maybe even bring your baby in and they can show you how to latch your baby on correctly and try to figure that out there. If you're just like, I don't even wanna do that, I don't care, it's fine that he doesn't latch, I just wanna feed him breast milk, then I would try to start getting on a really rigid schedule for pumping, especially now because you're still in that newborn stage. Every two hours, have your pumps on and you should be pumping for 20 minutes. 
Um, you can go up to 30 minutes if you want, but 20 minutes should be plenty. If you have them both on at the same time, you can pump for just 20 minutes. If you're doing one and then the other, then obviously it would be a total of 40 minutes. I would definitely, if the he's has a bottle in his mouth, your pumps should be on. And then every two hours, set your timer and pump. I would even, be, only because you're saying that you're not getting a lot of milk, I would even wake up at night and pump every two hours as well. The power pumping, do that once a day, maybe even for a week, three to four days to a week, and try some supplements for yourself. Water intake, food that you're eating, all of that factors in as well. And I know that it sounds like a whole lot of work, y'all, and it definitely is, especially in those beginning months. But if you stick to it, I promise you, it gets so much easier and it actually becomes very enjoyable and a bond that is great. All of you guys that have sent your questions in and that I'm answering, I would love to hear back from y'all. The advice that I'm giving you, and if you've tried it, how is it going with you? I would love to know. So always check back with me and let me know like how your journey is going so far. I feel like my milk supply is going down. They don't feel full of milk anymore throughout the day. And I used to be able to pump and get milk out. But now the only time I'm able to feel full and pump is at four in the morning. Again, your milk is going to dwindle down here and there. You're going to see a drop a ton of different times. And like I said earlier, there's so many factors to that as well. In the beginning stages, you are going to feel engorged. Once your milk starts coming in, it'll start leaking out. Your breasts are going to feel really like rock hard. That'll go on for about the first month, even sometimes up to like three or four months, especially if you've like slept all night long, you wake up, your boobs are rock hard and they're leaking everywhere because your baby didn't eat all night. But once you hit like the four month, well, three to four month mark, your boobs are not gonna get hard anymore. They're not gonna be, you know, looking like they're huge, about to pop, full of milk, getting rock hard. That's just not gonna happen anymore. That doesn't mean that your body is not producing that much milk. You actually are still producing that much milk. It's just not going to be in that form, I guess, if, if that makes sense. When you pump and when your baby eats, your body is still gonna let down all of that milk. It's just not gonna be all stored and rock hard right here. <clears throat> Mainly because your body is going to figure out that schedule on what your baby needs, depending on if you're pumping or breastfeeding, and only produce that amount every time you need to feed your baby. So just because you don't feel like it's there full or hard doesn't mean that your body is not producing enough milk. Now when you pump, if you can tell that it's low, then I would definitely try to use some of the tools that I've talked about earlier to, you know, up it a little bit, but it still is not going to make you feel like during the day when you're walking around, oh, my boobs are so heavy and they're so full of milk. It's not going to happen. After about three or four months, that just won't happen anymore. Okay, this question is, if your baby is eating every two hours, how do you find time to pump and build a supply? I think I might have answered this, something similar earlier, but... Yes, your baby's probably gonna be eating every two hours and you are literally gonna be feeling like you're feeding your baby and then you're pumping and then you're feeding your baby and then you're pumping and you're diaper changing in between that and that is literally it. And that is pretty much true for the first newborn months. After that, your baby is gonna move to three months or three months, three hours or four hours of feeding. You're probably not going to need to pump as many times during the day, but yes, if you want to build a stash, I would definitely <laughs> try to stick to if they're feeding every two hours you feed them you put the pumps on again you may only need to put them on for five minutes but then again you may have to put them on for 20 minutes it is going to feel like you don't have any time at all for anything else but i promise you if you are wanting to stick to this get yourself through that like it's going to be hard it is a full-time job to be a mom and to breastfeed i mean breastfeeding on demand is already a full-time job so then when you add the pumping it's definitely going to feel like that's literally all you do and it's true but it will not be forever. It will only be for a couple months until your body really gets onto that schedule and starts just pumping out that milk that you need. And then after that, you really don't need to pump all the time unless you really see a dip in your milk again. Okay, this one. <laughs> when did Aunt Flo come back to town after starting to wean and how bad was it? All right, this is a misconception. A lot of people think that you only get your, your period after your baby stops breastfeeding and most of the time that is true, but there are a lot of people, a lot of mamas out there that get their period multiple times during their breastfeeding journey in that first year. Your milk flow will drop down when your period comes, which means you have to try to, you know, do stuff to make it build back up again. It won't make it stop completely as long as you're working on it. 
but you can get your period even though you're breastfeeding. I didn't have that problem with my other babies, but with Knox, I did get my period like twice while I was still breastfeeding completely. Like I was breastfeeding, I was pumping, I was doing all the things. And one day I woke up and there she was. So it was very painful. The first period you get after delivery and it could be maybe you know two weeks in it could be six months in it could be a year in, it could be two years in whatever it may be for you it is definitely the most painful one i hate it i hate it hate it hate it and it literally that's when you realize like oh my god i haven't had this in so long and i wish i never had to have them again <laughs> because you get used to not having them and then that first one back is the most painful the flow is going to be super super high a lot going on you are gonna be in lots of pain. You'll be needing lots of ibuprofen, <laughs> heating pads, all of that stuff. Um, and even sometimes the second or third one after that can also be pretty heavy and pretty painful. Now, some people will say, okay, the first one was bad, the rest were totally fine. And again, that's just because all of our bodies are different and the way that we go through things. Mine have always been in excruciating pain no matter what, whether it was after delivery or not. So I already know. <laughs> And mine are gonna be really bad but it's definitely not fun now yes if you are weaning your baby you're probably gonna get your period and actually to be honest if you're trying to wean and you get your period it's probably gonna be a great thing for you because it's gonna help get that milk to stop flowing if that's what you want so okay I did get another question about you know how to wean your baby from breast milk or pumped milk let's start with breastfeeding so if with breastfeeding for number one, you're going to want to make sure you give yourself enough time. It's not going to be something that you just like cold turkey quit one day and then they're fine or that you're done in a week. It may take a whole month of slowly weaning them off. The first thing you're going to want to do is change the schedule up a little bit. So the first week I would start out with taking out one feeding a day. So you breastfeed your baby any other time and then one feeding out of that day you don't breastfeed baby you give baby a bottle and a lot of times the best way to do this because they're going to want mama and the booby is try to give them a bottle with daddy so daddy feeds them a bottle at night or maybe grandma and grandpa or a friend or somebody else does that so it changes it up for them a little bit and then what you're going to want to do is like the next week then you're going to get rid of two feedings a day on mommy and you're going to do bottles i would keep that up and in between that your body's going to slowly learn okay i need less milk i need less milk i need less milk and slowly dwindle on its own so that way you don't end up with like a clogged duct or mastitis um, again you're also going to want to quit pumping if you're breastfeeding on demand now if you are pumping only exclusively then this kind of goes the same for you your baby's already taking a bottle of breast milk so what i would do is just not pump you know get rid of a pumping session a day get rid of two pumping sessions a day and just feed your baby the milk that you already have if you are dwindling down with your breast milk also when you're trying to wean baby from breast milk to formula or to uh, regular milk or uh, cow's milk or goat milk or whatever it is that you choose then you want to do one bottle a day so your, your baby gets bottles of breast milk all day you give them one bottle of formula for like a week maybe two weeks just depending on your baby then the next time you give them two bottles and so on if you do it cold turkey you're gonna be in pain your baby's not gonna be happy it's just not good <laughs> So don't do that. Also try to distract your child because if they are in the older stages of life and they're used to you know, being fed on a certain timeline and you wanna stretch that out longer to get rid of a couple of these feedings, then try to distract your babies or your, your toddlers. Give them things to do, go outside and play, whatever it is that you can do to distract them longer so that they get past that feeding and then they don't need it till, you know, whatever, three, four hours later. Now, obviously this doesn't mean that by the time you get down to like four bottles a day and not breastfeeding, that it has to only be daddy doing it because you still want to have that bond with your babies. Obviously, maybe daddy does one and they get used to that. They get used to taking the bottle. Then you can go ahead and you give the baby a bottle a couple times. That way you don't lose that bond. They don't get, you know, you completely cut out of their feeding <laughs> because that is also part of their comfort. You, mama, are their comfort. Not only are they feeding to eat, but they're also feeding because they need comfort from you. They've been in your body for a very long time. You are all they know, your scent, your heartbeat, 
the the sound of you breathing and even if your baby isn't breastfeeding and they're eating a bottle and you're holding them in your arms it doesn't matter how old they are y'all like they need that time with you and that feeling that closeness even if you want to wean it still can be a very emotional time because you're realizing like that part of your journey is done with and sometimes it can be sad to think that they're not going to be that close to you anymore but that's really not the case you're just going to find other ways to be close to them and for them to be close to you it just won't be in that form anymore um okay a couple other things i've heard obviously cabbage leaves you can put those in your bra to help kind of dry it up a little bit here and there i know that that one has worked really well for a lot of my friends i've also heard that peppermint oil can but i would do your research i haven't done my research on it yet but i heard something about peppermint oil being somehow <laughs> helps dry it up i don't think you put it on your nipple maybe you like rub it in your hand and then rub it around your breasts i'm not really sure don't quote me on that and just go and do it do your research first on that um, I know that there's a bunch of other like uh, midwives tales out there that you could probably find and try out Some of them work great and some of them are just not at all. Okay. This one is just a little topper I'm gonna add that's I think that's all the questions I have I know there was a couple other ones, but they're kind of the same Wording I think I've pretty much answered everything that I was sent in if there's Something that I didn't really hit on that you feel like you're still not understanding or you need help with i'm always here send me a comment and to this video and i will check them and get back with you i want to add a little tidbit if you are deciding that you're going to wean you don't want to breastfeed anymore make sure that you pump a little bit in a baggie you only need like an ounce maybe two ounces max in a bag and keep it in your freezer because there are some ton there are tons of companies out there that make beautiful breast milk jewelry like rings and necklaces and they only need like a teaspoon of your breast milk you can even send them in a little piece of your baby's hair you can pick out you know the shape of the ring the shape of the necklace and they pour it in there they can even add like shimmer and colors whatever you want and that way you have a little keepsake of something that you can wear around your neck or on your hand to remind you of the bond and that whole experience whether you know you started out and it was just so hard it was the hardest work you've ever done in your life and then it got to the point where it became the best bond between you and your baby i just think it's a great keepsake to remind you of that time that you went through and how strong you are as a mama to go through all of those things you know give yourself an early christmas present or maybe even a birthday present tell hubby this is what i want i've got it here and those companies will tell you how to send in the milk so that they can you know make your jewelry for you but i would definitely check that out i'm definitely gonna do that this time around i wish all right y'all that's it for this video thank you guys so much for watching and I hope I answered your questions. Like I said earlier, if you have any more, always let me know down in the comments and I will try to get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, on top of that, I want you guys to know that breastfeeding and pumping is a lot of hard work. It is very rewarding in the end, but if you feel so stressed out and it is just causing havoc on your mental health, it's okay to quit. It's okay to just give in do the formula, do whatever it is you need to do for your baby because as long as baby is happy and you are happy and you are healthy, that's all that matters. Do not stress yourself out for not being able to breastfeed for a certain amount of time that you wanted to. You're still a great mom. So I just wanted to let y'all know that. And also don't forget to check out the Jack's bags for your breast milk, your bottles, your pumping bags, whatever it is that you need to keep with you on hand, whether you're traveling, you're just out and about running errands, definitely check them out. I'll have it in the description box down below for y'all. And I will see you guys on my next one. Bye.